this is pure improvisational whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I want to do this, you throw it out, and I'll either let you do it or I'll make fun of you and let not like not let you do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Is it okay if I have a masterwork break club? <laughs> For barbarians, <laughs> is that just a, is that just a, a, an extra nice stick? Yes. yes, you do. That's exactly what you have. It's a stick with a nail in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you, you've evolved to the technology of nail. I speak half a language. <laughs> Which half? The present tense half. <laughs> do you keep that many dice in your pocket? No, I just brought it. A D5? I'm a wild mage then. Okay. Oh wild shit. Wild mage, here we go. <laughs> Just you know got that real. Is. You must at one point in this game cast in Hall's Reckless Dreamer. <laughs> it's a requirement. I'm gonna have to write that down because I'm not gonna remember that. That's that's the core wild mage spell. I've never played a wild mage in my life. But I'm the skanky have? fairy barbarian. <laughs> yeah, bone arrow. Yeah, yes. poisonous knife. There you go. Fancy goblin. Yeah. You're not a goblin. Goblin? It's the goblin is what people kill in this game. You not, don't play a goblin. Look at him! Just because you picked the wrong oh mini doesn't mean you play a goblin. So, names. Babs. Babs, the tiefling, the tiefling barbarian. barbarian. Glub. <laughs> Which glub? <laughs> the, I guess I'm a triglodyte rogue. Okay, you guess. I am Merrick the Random, the human wild mage. Okay, congratulations for playing human. <laughs> Plus 50 experience points. Yes! <laughs> We're not doing bullshit. Wow, okay. teamings are awesome. You enter the inn. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Oh, I definitely get a beer. Okay. I will also get a beer. I make Babs buy me a beer. Hell no. <laughs> I want to look around to see who else is in the inn. Okay, you. You go to the bar and you see an innkeeper who is uh, going to be Veronica Belmont. Uh, barbarian Veronica Belmont, yes. covered in woad. She's obviously retired. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what she looks like, and she is kind of glowering over the bar. I definitely like fist bump her over the bar because I recognize my people. Okay. Um, and then I ask her for a drink, uh, preferably something dark. Okay. And, uh, bready. I don't drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll to bullshit your way through this interaction. I got three. Three. <laughs> three. She sneers at your lack of brewing prowess. <laughs> Over in the corner, you see someone in the shadows lurking. It is a hooded figure. It is Will we? I'm going to pull my hood up more okay. for matching hoods. He makes eye contact with, contact with you, and he, you share a moment of hooded, lurking solidarity, and you get the sense that he may have a quest for you. I continue drinking my beer. Okay. You, I come up to the bar, hoping that she got me my beer, because uh, Veronica scares me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is why I sent you up to the bar. Yes, the, the inn is a little empty, because... Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not a solid business model. <laughs> like, angry, barbarian. You know, the, the sort of guys that come to this bar tend to leave this bar very quickly through the window, you can sense. I give you my beer. Excellent. And I order another. And I wink at her at the end. I kind of, I'm flirting a little bit. Okay. Because I'm kind of into that stuff. The okay. creepiness, the creepy glaring. The throwing out of windows, oh, sure. the, that sort of thing. Oh, okay, so like shared hobbies, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe yeah. the two of us could get together at some point and, you know, kind of beat, beat, some, some, people beat, some, up. beat some dudes up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, that's a barbarian three-way. Yeah. <laughs> um, How many people are in this tavern right now? There's about four or five patrons, look like old customers here. There's a, uh, a serving boy um, kind of cowering behind the bar. There's a, uh, a musician just kind of sitting by the hearth. They're not actually playing right now. And, uh, and that's about it. Like I said, it's pretty empty. He said, oh, this is key. As a GM, you have a lot of stuff to take care of. And if you're like me, you obsessively prepare. And you have like a little file that's full of various things like locations, um, including like people, random plot points, 
a specific thing labeled secrets. Um, <laughs> and so you might keep a few NPCs in your back pocket, but uh, sometimes you run and you are dry and you don't really have a plan for the serving boy or something like that. And that's what these cards are great for. So uh, not having a musician prepared. Um, you know, it might actually be easy to go with Molly Lewis. I'm tempted to go with Felicia Day. You know, we break the mold. So it's like she would be playing music here. You know, you don't want to typecast Molly Lewis, you know, <laughs> as, as just a musician in all your games. Instead, instead, I'm actually going to pick Neil Gaiman for the musician. Ooh. Ooh. Yep, here he is. Um, a tall, dark, handsome stranger hmm. is over by the hearth. Tuning, uh, tuning a uh, let's say a mandolin, and he kind of he, he looks at you uh, very seriously. I would take a general like charisma roll, like if you're okay. trying to. Uh, eight is gonna hurt me here. Yep. Oh! oh! I'll take it. Natural twenty. You hit it off with this musician. You know, you offer to buy him a drink. He says, no, no, no. He insists on buying you a drink. It's unprecedented. Turns out you know some of the same people. Um, you sit down. He starts playing oh, music. Know. Yeah, you know? And uh, and then, you know, before you know it, you guys are actually drinking. You are having a great time. You're making up songs about some of the other people in the bar, on the fly. And, uh, yeah, seems like he's having a blast over there. I'm going to stay with Will Wheaton in the corner and just be in the shadows. Okay. So the two of you kind of, like, gaze suspiciously at all of the other people in the room. And, you know, kind of disdainfully. It's like they're making big shows of themselves. They're becoming the worse for drink, you know, publicly. Where you know that the proper way to drink is, like, alone. You know, somewhere dark. Um, <laughs> with, with your hood all the way up and, uh, and he says if these are the people you travel with I'm not sure you might be the right people for this job fate has thrown me in with these Cretans <laughs> from, we're a long way from Greece I inquire to Veronica if I may buy her a drink uh, and then try to get her to come dance with me Hey, okay. So let's check out the stats on our card here. One. Um, okay, nothing on the card that contradicts that. Sure. Um, so I feel like we're dancing a little bit a little bit ridiculously. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm worse for drink, and so I uh, try to pull off a move. Uh, <laughs> you I'm... have dancing as a skill. No. Do you mm -hmm. have it as a base proficiency? No. Have you ever seen anyone dance I don't ever? think so. Okay, so I will take a skill roll. Yeah. Yeah, that's not great. Mm -mm. And you pretty much just fly into the middle of somebody else's table. Um, and that means, effectively, you start a bar fight um, with a mix of, like, really <laughs> tough-looking people. And these tough-looking people are Felicia Day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Molly right. Lewis. Yep. And Miriam Call. Oh, you're tough. Oh, oh, come on. Yeah. Yep. I'll take a roll to see how you have been getting along with, with Will. Six. Six. You can sense that you're not going to be able to make this deal in conventional ways. What if I pull my hood down farther? You've got your hood. He, you both. At this point, he's like, he's got his way down. He's kind of hunched way over his drink. I can go so far. And, and you're, you're thinking, you know how this works. You know that typically he's going to have like a map or a key, or like a fragment of pottery with a clue on it that he's going to give you, you think your only chance at this point is to steal it from him. So, I'm going to try to steal whatever secret item Will Wheaton has on it. Mm -hmm. 17. 17. Okay, so over the course of talking, and you kind of are trying to warm him up to the idea of hiring you guys, and he's getting like closer and closer, hunching over more and more, and He's like, I can't, this is going to damage my street cred. So you effectively, you walk away with, like, there's a map, like an, an old crumbling map. There's a key. Um, there is actually a, fr a fragment of pottery with a couple of old runes on it, a jeweled dagger, uh, 
the orb of Belshamaroth. You know, you've got it, pretty much everything. You know, um, all of his money. You know, his wedding ring. Um, <laughs> and a garter. <laughs> Weirdly yeah. enough. Yeah, and a bustier. Uh, these other tough women stand up. Um, one of them <laughs> draws... I don't know if she would actually have her ukulele with her. Um, but there's kind of a Kill Bill motif here. Um, so yeah, she would. Uh, Molly Lewis draws her sword. Felicia Day, probably not a portal gun, but let's say crossbow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the point at which everything like seriously goes to. Sh Neil Gaiman is hurt after the last encounter. I need you to keep track of him because he is effectively following you. Um, uh, because of the bond that you forged. Uh, Veronica Belmont, uh, you don't think she's coming back. She said she was going to guard the passageway, but you think that really what happened between you and that half dragon, it was a deal breaker for her. I hired some henchmen <laughs> back in town. Are they, have they met us here yet? Uh, you were just able to get the, the one henchman because of your charisma score. Yeah. This will teach everyone to lowball charisma in a game of mine. You want to roll 3d6 to see the quality of your henchman. Now, do you have um, do you have the the copper dice? I do. That we, oh. uh, did, you, did you buy them from the Indiegogo? Yes. Okay, then gotcha. you can get a plus two. Wow. Four, six, and four. That was much better. <laughs> see? That's why... We buy the high-quality dice. Gotta have the copper dice. So for so that's a sixteen. You get an extremely high-level henchman. Do we want Paul and Storm. No, no. Um. <laughs> I think we're gonna pick Kevin Smith and the torchbearer you got in town. Did he survive the thing um, he was with the gelatinous a lot. cube? Yeah. Um, he was pretty in pretty rough shape. Okay, but, we'll, we'll uh, say that he's effectively he's about four hit points. Yeah. Um, that's Jonathan Colton, um, yeah. and he's a little the worse for wear. If he gets hit again, he's down. I spit in his wound to try and make it better. <laughs> yeah. Spit always your answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do do your barbarian. Um, yeah, your barbarian uh, first aid attempt. I think all she is healing. What did you roll? I rolled a seven. That's gonna force a loyalty check. <laughs> Your torch bearer who's really I mean he jumped in front of you. I don't know. Um, I mean it's I tried. There's the rust monster and everything. No. No, effectively at this point he starts to cry. He he, <laughs> he curses at you. Um you know, and it, you you realize that the real deal breaker is this was you know, the reason he agreed to come along is because he was probably in love with Veronica Belmont, too. Uh -huh. He's the serving boy. He agreed to come along and protect her, and he realizes she isn't coming back either, and that, you know, you've, you've kind of been a whore all through the adventure, <laughs> so he just bursts into tears, and he runs. You lose Jonathan Colton uh -huh. as a torchbearer here. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. You only can cast it once. It's either on you or Neil Gaiman. I, uh, Neil Gaiman, come on. I, you know, I gotta keep my bro alive. <laughs> okay. You come into the final dungeon. The air is dank. Um, and by which I mean it's moist, not like... It's like sweet cool. Ass, but yeah. Air. yeah. It's not like a sweet-ass dungeon in the modern, <laughs> modern parlance. Um, wicked dank. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not wicked dank. It is wicked, comma, dank, comma... <laughs> And perilous is yes. the Oxford comma. Yes. And as soon as the Oxford comma is mentioned, the villain reveals himself. It's John Scalzi, uh, who uh, oh, obviously, Scalzi. yes, he's the zombie lord, as you can see from this card, uh, because he's all gone green, and he, you hear him shout, Oxford comma! <laughs> 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 and he brings out uh, obviously Max Temkin is some kind of ghost here based off his card um, I would say oh maybe um, Amanda Palmer looks a little bit pale here uh, we'll say that she's a zombie too um, and your club's gonna be good here yeah. and let's bring in the double clicks leading 
and you realize this is this it's it's a unicorn. Oh. Oh man. And it's that big. Oh. It's too scale. Oh god. Oh okay. No, not <laughs> <laughs> It's a wax golem. Okay. Yeah, that's stupid. Um <laughs> we got uh Bunkwog the Horrible. Mm-hmm. Bunkwog the Horrible. Yeah. Adam, did you paint that one? I did. Nice. That's actually a really good painting job. Mm-hmm. Neil Gaiman and Amanda Palmer, she's one of the zombies. I think this is gonna call for a loyalty check. Mm. Um now you've got you've got I would say plus two from drunkenness, you cast the armor on him, uh you pulled him out of that pit of acid. I'd say plus four. And it's gonna be modified by your charisma. I'm sorry, but Ooh, that's what happens. This isn't with. gonna be pretty guys. Yeah. Alcohol is what makes me pretty. Oh, that's Twelve. Okay. Um so he he kind of staggers out, you know, he kind of, you can tell he's torn, he starts moving away from you and he's over here. Uh, so, actions, what does everyone do? I'm gonna hide behind Kevin Smith. Okay. Would this be a charm person or charm monster at this point? To charm me or to Neil charm Gaiman? you. That would be monster. Monster. Yeah. Make a roll, you will assume that you can treat uh, Kevin Smith as armor. Um, or at least like 90% cover. That's fair. Because you, you wanted a, a, a big a thug. Um, and Neil Gaiman will make his will say. Okay. Um, through the manipulate. Oh, you have to oh, yep, yep. roll gotta... for your wild surge. Let's see what happens. Uh, 18. I actually don't know how wild surge works. <laughs> the <edition. laughs> <laughs> I only know it from second edition. It's a percentile. It's I, supposed I to be, it, if you roll, it's like a 10% chance or something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, I would just say make it up. No, and actually at this point, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the the boss monster says, it is time. We gotta get back to work on the fundraiser. Uh, sorry. Sorry, that is the... Uh, that's, that's gotta be the end of what we do here today. <laughs> Yeah, I know you wanted a big climactic scene, but that comes on Monday when we wrap up the fundraiser. And you know, and you know what? If if we if we bat, beat last year's total, we will all have. I will run an honest god game for you, and we'll record it. How about that? I like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got it on tape. Um, I'll run a game for everyone. It'll be fun. We'll use the Geek of Week cards. Um, I'll ad lib a lot of it like I have been doing here. <laughs> I prepared none of this. And, you know, I, I did this to kind of show how you could use the Geek of Week cards. And it is so easy. You know, like you pick up on one silly little thing in the card. I made John Scalzi a zombie because he happens to be green there. I don't know if that was the intention of the card. Max Temkin is obviously just done in a noir style, but he was a perfect ghost. Um,. You know, uh, Paul and Storm would have made a great two-headed giant because that's yeah. what yeah. they are on this card. Um, my only regret is that I know Stan Lee is in here somewhere. Mm-hmm. I I kind of wanted to make him like an old monk oh, yeah. or something. <laughs> um, you know, so all of these cards are in the, the season one and the season two deck. Um, you can still get some of the copper dice. And if you jump in and participate and get us up past 200,000 by the end of the fundraiser, I'd really love to beat last year's total. We'll do a whole honest-to-goodness game instead of sort of a fake made-up one and uh, edit that together. I think let's keep it to the World Builders team. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Unless, like, maybe Scott Lynch is close and he wants to (laughs) drive over. Or maybe that's the weekend Max comes up. Yeah, sure. That'd be a ton of fun. So... Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks yeah. for supporting uh, the fundraiser. Yay. Thanks. Yay.